Welcome to this online service at City of Hope. The Bible declares from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. I read from verse 1. The Bible says, And I, when I came to you, brothers, I did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Say amen. amen. I've entitled my message, if you're like me, I like titles to a message. I've entitled my message this morning, A Firm Foundation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our foundation in our walk with God, children of God, does not rest on our experience. Does not rest on anything else but Jesus Christ himself. If you build on any other foundation, that foundation will sink. Because the storms of life will come in your life. Not they might come. The storms of life will come. It's either you've just come out of the storm or you are going in, in one right now or a storm is just about to come. Jesus told us that here in this life you will have, not you might have, you will have tribulations. But he says you cheer up because I have overcome. Can I hear you say amen? amen. So Jesus himself, the son of God, is the firm foundation for our faith. He's the firm foundation for this Christian walk. There could be some here you got saved at the crusade ground. That experience that was so wonderful there is not our foundation. Our foundation is a person. Our foundation is not just some experience. It's the person of Jesus Christ, the Son of God himself. Can I hear you say amen? amen? It's not founded on anything else but on Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Here the Apostle Paul tells these brothers in Corinth that when I came to you, these were very intelligent people he was ministering to. He could have gone there with some intelligence, with some plausible words, with some wisdom. He was a doctor of the law. He was well schooled. But he says, when I came to you, I came just a human being. Actually, I was trembling myself. I was in fear myself, and I did not come to please you because they really love to debate, have high-level intellectual debates. But he says, I did not come that way. I came with a demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Now, that demonstration of the Spirit and power is not just the healings and the miracles we have been seeing this, or this week throughout at the crusade and as we have been ministering. But one of the most powerful demonstration of the Spirit of God in your heart, in your soul, it is the Holy Spirit of God revealing King Jesus to your soul. Because that's the firm foundation. Jesus tells the, you know, the story of the rich man and, the, uh, uh, and Lazarus to say, you send him to go and warn my brothers and sisters. He says, they have the prophets to warn them. Even in the time of Jesus, people had seen Jesus. They had touched him. They still walked in doubt. Some of people walked with Apostle Paul himself. Apostle Paul says, Demas has left me. Having loved the pleasures of this world. If the foundation is not Jesus himself. Our foundation is not miracles. 
Our foundation is not just some experience. Our foundation is the revelation of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Can I hear you shout amen? amen. My brothers and my sisters, the Apostle Paul goes on telling us in chapter 3, so you just move one chapter forward. And this is what he says in chapter number 3 of the same book of Corinthians. This is what he says to the Corinthians. He says in verse 11, chapter 3, verse 11. For no one can lay any other foundation. Let me read that again. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. There is no other foundation that can be laid. Other than that which is already laid. Christ Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, this morning I call to you to reflect again. What is the foundation you are building on? Is it Jesus? Is it a good experience you've had? Let it be Jesus, the Son of God. But that foundation would not happen in our heart. Without the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of God who draws us to himself. The Bible declares in the book of John chapter number 6 and verse number 44. It says that nobody can come to Christ except the Spirit of God has drawn them. Hallelujah. Now this is very important, dear brothers and sisters, as we walk on this journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. Like I say, that storms will come. It's either you're coming out of one, or you've just entered one, or one is coming your way. And there are all kinds of storms of life that will come to challenge our faith. Will come and challenge your foundation. And if the foundation is not Jesus Christ, the Son of God himself, that foundation will shake and that foundation will be destroyed. Many people have given up, just like Demas himself. Demas was a, a companion of Apostle Paul. He worked with Paul. He saw people healed from handkerchiefs. But his storms were the pleasures of this world. It can be a storm. People have experienced prosperity. Instead of walking in thanksgiving to God, prosperity has taken them down. Let the foundation be Jesus, the Son of God himself. Can I hear you say amen? amen. We skip to the book of the Apostle Peter. He continues to talk about these foundations. And the apostles also, first John, the apostle John also talks about this same foundation. He says, that which we have seen, that which we have heard, our hands have touched the word of life. Their foundation was Jesus Christ himself. They had faced so much persecution that they would have given up. But they said, we have seen him. We have touched him. We have walked him. But beyond just seeing Jesus physically, eating with him, something had happened to their heart. The revelation of the Son of God had opened up in their spiritual eyes. It's the reason that when the Spirit of God came and revealed Jesus Christ to, to these disciples, remember that these guys were just ordinary people like you and me. They faced challenges. And they were more challenged when Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, was taken to the cross. Men of them ran away. A storm came. They ran away. Peter himself started following Jesus at a distance. He was shaken. They carried Jesus, taking him to the cross. And when he was being tried, the Apostle Peter went to warm himself on the fire together with the enemies of Jesus. He was shaken. And when Jesus was taken to the cross, the man was in so much depressed because just like Judas, he felt he had betrayed the master. He had been there. If it meant to die for Jesus, he should have died together with him. He was shaken. But 
when Jesus rose from the dead, he said, you go and take this news, encourage the brethren, and also Peter. And when that flame had come from heaven on the day of Pentecost, the man who was shaken, the man who had run away, was so empowered. And the other disciples, that most of these men who were scared of death, this time the story had changed. The revelation of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was settled in their spirits. These men to the point that now, because of the firm foundation in their heart, they were willing to even lay. Actually, they said, the apostles say, it would be an honor if I would be killed for the sake of Jesus. It would be an honor if I would even suffer the suffering of Jesus. If I can be crucified, the apostle Peter himself, he who, the historian tells us that actually he was crucified except upside down because he said, do not crucify me like my master. He was willing to be crucified. He didn't resist it. This is the man who ran away. Jesus, our fame, foundation. Hallelujah. I said we go to the book of Peter and we'll close from the book of Peter. Peter write his books to the brothers who were going through so many challenges, so many difficulties. And he writes to them in the book of Peter here. And this is what he says to them. The book of First Peter chapter 1 and verse 1 I read. To those who are elect Exiles, dispersion in Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, in the sanctification of the Spirit, for the obedience to Jesus Christ, for the sprinkling of his blood. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, According to his great mercy, he causes us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance in imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you by God's power and are being guided through the faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last uh, time. Hallelujah. He says he has, he has raised us, caused us to be born again to a living hope. Can I hear you say a living hope? And he says this living hope is through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, from the dead. Now, in this firm foundation, there are just a few things I want to bring to you and we'll be closing. Can I hear you say amen? amen? Number one, here the Apostle Peter tells the brethren that you are chosen. Tell, tell your neighbor you are chosen. You are chosen. And in that choosing, it says you have been born again, not of corruptible things. It says by the word of God. It is that word of God breathed on by the spirit of a sovereign Lord that has revealed Jesus in your heart. That seed that has entered into your spirit man causing a miracle called being born again. That is our living hope. Jesus Christ in our heart and we are in him. We are chosen in him because of the miracle of salvation. Can I hear you shout your loudest amen? So number one, you are chosen. Say, I am, I am chosen. And this choosing, it was by the work of the Holy Spirit in your heart and in my heart. Hallelujah. The apostle Paul, you can write down if you're writing in 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse number 2. He tells us that to the church of God in Corinth, who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, set apart in Christ Jesus, brought in by the Spirit of the living God. Can I hear you shout again, amen? amen. You came to Christ because the Spirit of God drew you to Him. 
It's a work of the Spirit. And the experience we have today, some people say, I wish I lived in the, light, in the time of Jesus. No, don't wish you lived in the time of Jesus because the same reality that the apostles had in, this, in the time of Jesus, we have it today by the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Just like the Apostle Paul, he's not an apostle unto the Lamb. He never walked physically with Jesus, but his experience is like our experience. The Holy Spirit of God revealed Jesus in his heart. Hallelujah! Praise be to God. Number two, we have a living hope. Say a living hope. We have a living hope. So no matter what challenges may come our way, we are laid on a firm foundation and we have a living hope. And that hope is not just a feeling of expecting something. No, it is the person of Jesus himself who is the hope of glory on the inside of us. So whatever storm come in our life, whatever it may be, we stand and we remain fame in Christ Jesus. Amen. In the midst of pain and suffering and persecution, his mercy, his hope causes that living hope on the inside of you to bring a deep-seated conviction of the reality of Jesus in you. And so you are not holding to Jesus because of a, just a good experience. And you are not shaken because of a bad experience. Your walk with him is not based on an up or, an da or a down. It is based on the person of Jesus himself. Hallelujah. So your Christian work, your foundation, and your hope is not because they say God is good. Why? Because they've just got a raise. It's okay to have a raise. We need a raise. You know, it's good we have all these beautiful things around us. But when we say God is good, it's not based on some outward experience. It's based on the person himself. Because this, you know, the truth must be consistent in any part of the world. Then you know it's the truth. Just like gravity. Gravity is gravity in, in SA. It's gravity in Zambia. It's gravity in mainland China. It's gravity in the United States of America. It's the same with the truth. It's the same with the truth. It does not change. And so, we, when we preach the gospel, we are not giving some false hope to people. You know, if you preach in Brunei or you preach in many parts of Dubai, there are no poor people. And so if you are preaching a gospel that has a mixer, they'll say, look, I don't need your Jesus. If your Jesus is just going to lift me up, I'm already lifted. I have everything I need. <laughs> Jesus, the son of God. What about our friends who are in the underground church in China? There are no pleasures there. There is persecution. They have to hide. There are places where if people find this Bible, they have to tear it and share pieces of the Bible. Just a piece. Some people are reading a verse, only one verse or three verses on a leaf for many years because they can have a Bible. But the truth is consistent. Whether in persecution, whether in plenty. What is consistent is the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm not saying that the hand of Jesus will not lift you to this good life and give you a breakthrough for what you, you need. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying your foundation is not based on anything outward, but on the person of Jesus Christ. Let somebody caught me and possibly say, this guy said, no, Jesus cannot lift you. Jesus will not give you a raise. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the constant truth is the person of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Whether in pain, whether in suffering, whether in plenty. That's what the apostle says. He says, I have learned to persevere in all things because his foundation he did not say God is good because of any experience but because of the person of Jesus in his life can I hear you say amen, amen. 